Howdy folks, how are you all doing? My name is Reese, and a couple of months ago, while watching a trailer for an unrelated game entirely, I ended up discovering Black Myth Wukong. I'd not heard of it before that. I watched the trailer, I was like, this is intrigued, what is Monkey Man doing? What is this all about? Did a little bit more research, and I've been excited for the game ever since. Well, the developers have done something very cool. Right now on Steam, you can download a free compatibility slash benchmark program for the game. Uh, you don't have to pre-order the game or own the game or anything like that. It's completely free to download, and you can test and figure out whether or not your PC is capable of running the game, if it's compatible, uh, what kind of settings you could be looking at using, which I think is really cool. And for me, I, I know I could get the game on the PlayStation 5, but I'd rather play it on my gaming PC. But I don't game on Windows. I game on Linux, specifically Nobara Linux using Proton. And I wasn't sure if that was going to work. I can now say that it does, and I thought I'd share some of my testing with you. First thing to note, if you download this tool and you get terrible stuttery performance, this is the only game I have ever downloaded that just default tried to open with the integrated graphics. And I could figure out no way to make it not do that other than going into the BIOS and disabling the integrated graphics. I know how to change it on Windows. I have no clue how to do it on Nobara Linux. If you do, comment down below and let me know, because I'd like to use that to play the Kingdom Hearts games, because those are compatible with my iGPU, but not my actual GPU. RDNA 3, baby. Love it. Just horribly incompatible with Kingdom Hearts for some reason. Now, real quick to talk about my setup and my hardware before we go into the benchmarks. I game at 4K. I have 120 hertz display and I'm running on a custom built PC that is a little bit unique. Uh, my CPU is soldered onto my motherboard. It is the Minis Forums. What is it? A Minis Forums BD790i. It's a simple little ITX board with a soldered on mobile processor. The Ryzen 9 7945HX, 16 core, 32 thread. It's very power efficient. Uh, and then <laughs> there's a 7900 XTX bolted to that, which is not that efficient. But uh, all in all, the system draws maybe about 450 watts ish. So yeah, it's a pretty decently powerful system. Not top tier, but still pretty decently powerful. And let's go through our settings. We're going to do a number of runs and see what our results are. Now, one quick thing to note here I'm in the settings before we go through them for our first run. I just wanted to point out that I can't figure out how to turn off super resolution sampling, aside from cranking it up to 100, which should theoretically disable it. But if you go down here, your options are FSR, XCSS, which I believe is Intel's version, and then TSR, but at no point can you actually turn it off. So we're going to go for worst case scenario here on this run. We're going to go with uh, super resolution essentially disabled, no frame generation. I've got ray tracing on very high which shouldn't work very well because it's an amd gpu they have ray tracing support hardware ray tracing support but it's not the best and then we've got our graphics preset on cinematic which is as good as it gets i also did uh yes apply those settings i also did go ahead and disable vsync no frame rate cap or anything like that running in borderless all this good stuff let's hit the benchmark and let it run and see how bad it is oh one other thing to note that is important I'm not doing capture on the PC that I'm playing on. Uh, I'm capturing on a separate computer. However, I am using OBS with the NDI plugin to stream the footage over the network. So it is using my GPU, my 7900 XTX's GPU, uh, specifically the hardware encoders on board to encode that footage before sending it over the network. But any impact that might have is extremely negligible because again, it's using separate dedicated hardware for that encoding. But uh, I can see that we're getting a very cinematic experience right now at about 32 FPS. I will also go ahead and bring up, if it will allow me to. There we go. It's a little bit more information up there. So as you can see, the limiting factor here is definitely the GPU pegged at 100% utilization. I'm going to stop talking. I'm not going to talk my way through all of these. We're just going to let them run. Okay. So that gave us an average of 33 FPS, a maximum of 38, and a minimum of 18. And look at this, it actually gives you the lowest fifth, which is pretty handy. Oh, and look at that. Wow, this is actually a great screen. It gives you all kinds of information. I don't know why it says total VRAM use zero. Probably bugging out a little bit. But it also shows you there, there's the 7945HX. 
as well as the 7900 XTX game version, operating system version. Oh, it's, it's all great stuff on this screen. A little reminder of what our settings were for that run. Wait a minute. Ray tracing was on, though. Ray tracing was on. Why is it say it says full ray tracing off? What does that mean? Let's let's reconfirm. Let's go back into the settings again. And under graphics, yeah, full ray tracing is on. Oh, my bad. So that first test was everything on max without ray tracing. Let's do it again with ray tracing. Okay, there we go. It's enabled this time, which means wow, we're going to get below 30 this time. G wonderful. Let's see how that pans out. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what? I'm going to say it's 3 FPS. And we don't need any more of this. God bless AMD. They try. They really do try. Well, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can make it work at all. This is going to be our honest attempt at making ray tracing work. We're going to put it on low, and uh, I don't think we have to restart to lower the ray tracing level. We're going to turn this down to, you know what, again, honest attempt, medium. And we're going to drop... Should we enable frame generation? Actually, yeah, we probably should. And but we're going to put this back on high, so we'll do high... Low ray tracing. There's no high. It just goes from medium to very high. So low ray tracing. And we'll lower the super resolution to 80. Apply that. And we'll see. This is again an honest attempt at making ray tracing work. Oh boy. Sub 30, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about this. I think if we're sub-30 at the beginning of the test, we just bail. Is it possible at all to make this run with ray tracing? If I go into settings, you know, if I really, if I really try, let's set this to medium. Let's set FSR. At 50%, it stops saying it doesn't recommend these settings, which is good. Let's give that a go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got a steady 60. I gotta tell you, I mean, based on what I'm seeing right now, I'm not seeing a lot of benefit to the ray tracing. And I can tell that the textures and, and overall render quality is much lower. But we are hitting above 60 right now. Let's let this one play out. All right, an average of 52. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, and I can confirm ray tracing was on this time. Can you play with ray tracing on an AMD GPU? You could. You definitely could. Don't recommend it, though. Let's try for something more realistic. Let's actually set it up the way that I think I'll probably end up actually playing the game. And we're going to remember, okay? We're going to remember that we have to turn this off, apply that setting, and restart. So let's restart immediately. I should also note that when you initially start this game up, it gives you two options. There's a regular mode and a compatibility mode. And I think the compatibility mode uses an older version of DirectX. Uh, you could try that if you're so inclined. I'm not going to. Uh, possibly, maybe if you're on older hardware, you'll get better performance there. I don't know. What I do know is that we're not going to be using ray tracing. I don't want to use F, uh, super resolution below probably 80. Frame generation, I've never actually played a game with frame generation on to my, to my memory. But if I was guessing, I would say I want to play it at 4K. I want to get at least 100 FPS. My display is, it supports variable refresh rate. So even if we don't, you know, hit exactly 120, it's not going to become a, a weird, glitchy, stuttery mess. I think in order to do that high, 80% super resolution and frame generation on should get us there, I would hope. Currently on the menu, we're getting, you know, 350, 320, 300. It's dropping rapidly. I don't know what's happening right now. Menu FPS is irrelevant. Get me into that benchmark. 
Early signs are good. Early signs are very good. And this was my first attempt. I think it looks pretty good at these settings too. You can tell that first test we did where everything was maxed out. Um, you could tell the textures were a little higher quality. Remember, on that test, we did not have the frame generation turned on. So we might have been able to get that 30 FPS a little bit higher, but just turning on frame generation would not have been enough to get us up to 100 FPS. Other changes would still need to be made. My only concern with frame generation is that I know it adds latency, and I don't know how problematic that'll be in this game, because looking at just different combat demos that I've seen, it seems like the game is really fast-paced, pretty frenetic, and I'd be concerned that any amount of additional latency from, let's say, frame generation might lead to some some upsetting moments. <laughs> With, you know, if you have, like, that extra bit of latency. I don't know, though. I probably need to get into the game and start playing it to know for sure. All right, that's pretty decent performance. I don't know where that minimum of 50 came from, but the low fifth is 104. The average was 113. That's pretty acceptable to me, and it looked good. I'm going to do one more test where I crank this back up to cinematic, and we lower this to maybe 60, but I don't want to go a whole lot lower. If you've ever done super resolution really low, you'll know that the sort of artifacting you get is it, it really not worth it. It's much better to then raise this back up and lower your graphic settings. The question here is not necessarily will this perform better? Performance looks about the same. The question is, will the increased level of detail in the textures and in the environments be offset by the increased amount of noise I don't know why I put that in quotes, but that you generally get from using super sampling. Right now, it looks almost identical to me. I'm seeing on certain textures a bit more fuzz that is usually caused by the upscaling. But I would have expected it to be more prominent and more upsetting in the trees, like up in the leaves and everything. Which, maybe if I took stills and did some pixel peeping... I would see something up there that I didn't care for, but as of right now, this doesn't look like that much of a difference, other than the fact that it is performing not quite as well. So I think I like the last settings more. Of course, obviously watch and let me know in the comments which one you think looks best. I like the look of this game, by the way. As it kind of pulls through these environments, this is a very beautiful game. And I can't wait to just sprint through here, swinging a sword around and yelling. Yeah, you know, 101 average, a little bit lower. I, I Graphically, the textures I didn't notice a massive improvement on, but the whole thing at points looked a little fuzzier. I'm not really sure if that's worth it. I think that does it for today. I think we've got the results I was looking for. Uh, and we'll not be playing this game at a locked 120 unless I'm willing to take a little bit more of a hit on some of the settings. I'm going to keep experimenting with it, but does it run on Linux? Yeah, so far. Uh, the, the demo's working great. Uh, demo. The benchmarking tool is working great. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the game plays. I'm really excited about it. This is one that I started the year knowing nothing about, went into most of the year knowing nothing about, and it's, I think, maybe the most anticipated game for me this year. Uh, that is remaining in the year. Uh, all of the games I was looking forward to have already come out, you know. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, phenomenal. Uh, Stellar Blade, Lots of fun. Bellatro was not anticipating it. Very good. Black Myth Wukong. Let's do it. I'm, I'm excited. If you want to watch me play through this game, I'll be doing that on the Howdy Folks LP channel. Uh, YouTube.com slash at Howdy Folks LP. There'll be links, I'm sure. Uh, right now, I'm playing through Stellar Blade, so if you want to catch up on that, you can. Until next time, thank you folks for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye. -bye.